Hello everyone, today we will talk about the Virtual 3D engine for the 3ds Max Studio. First, to download the Virtual 3D engine, you need to go to the softdatesouth.com website. Then select Download Virtual 3D. Here you need to select Virtual 3D for 3ds Max and press again Download Virtual 3D for 3ds Max. I already did this, that's how the application installer looks like. Actually, it is a self-unpacking archive. Let's launch it and see how it works. You can unpack it in any preferable place, because later you will be storing your applications in this folder. So there is no need to install it into program files or into 3ds max add-ons folder. Just extract it into the folder with which it will be more comfortable to you to work later. I actually already installed it, here it lies uh, just in the same folder. And now let's make it work with 3ds max. Here I open the 3ds Max, I am using the version of 2018. But on every previous and next version the installation process will be just the same. So to install Verge 3 d you need to go to Menu, Customize, choose Configure System Paths and select the third party plugins tab. Then you need to press Add and select the path to the Verge 3D engine. Here is this folder which I previously unpacked. And here we need to choose the Max Plugins folder. And select Use Paths. Pressing OK. And now everything that I need to do is to restart 3ds Max. If you did everything correctly, here on the top you can find the Verge 3D menu. If it didn't happen, you need to go to the Utilities, Max Script, then under Utilities select Verge 3D and press Register Verge 3D menu. Now you have the Verge 3D menu on top and this is the main Verge 3D menu. You will be working with it all the time and now I will tell you a little bit about it. The first menu item is the most important one because it actually exports the Steam into the GLTF format. So basically it's for the situation when your CDS Max scene is ready to be exported to GTF format to use it on your website or maybe to add some logic, etc. Then you have the option to export to the GLB format. This is uh, basically the binary version of GLTF that is mostly made so you can export your model quickly for the publication on a Facebook. The next menu item is sneak peek. It is used uh, to see how your Steam will look in the browser without actually exporting it every time into GLTF format. The second of importance menu item here is Run App Manager. It lets you organize already existing applications to add new ones or to actually publish your model on your website. Also in this menu there are some specific export options which I will tell you about in some of the next tutorials. First of all let's talk about the app manager. Let's run it. As you can see it works in a browser. Here you can see the list of all the applications that you have. For now it is the list of base Verge3D applications which come with Verge3D. Those are the applications which help to demonstrate the potential of Verge3D. You can run any of them. For example, let's run the Ruin application. 
this is the application where you can customize your own rings you can change the material the size and etc also here you can find links on the documentation to the code examples to our forum and if you purchase the license you can actually activate it here by pressing the enter key button the application manager is not only for modifying already existing applications and showing the list of corresponding files but you also can create a new application here in the menu on the right you can create a name for your new application to choose some specific functions and then you need to press the button create new app well in my example i will leave everything by the defaults and press the button create app and now here in the list you can see the new application that i just created by the default it creates the templates of all the files which i will need in my future application and also helpful files which are connected to it so let's dig a little bit into it and see which files are in the application folder first of all it is an html file with which you will start your application the next file is the gltf file in which you export your scene from Judea studio max next there is the puzzles button it will help you to create a visual logic for your application and then goes actually the max file with your application which contains all the models animations and links to the textures after opening it you can change it in the way you want or to replace them with your own already existing max stins and the next icon is the world icon this will help you publish your work on the internet with this you can publish your application on your website send it to your customer or publish it in the social medias okay and now let's check how our freshly created application looks like first i will open the html file here we can see the default bhtd cube Now let's open the 3D Max Steam. You can do it by pressing this button here. Or open it directly in 3D Studio Max. Go to the application folder. And here you go, my awesome app. So, yeah, it opened and now we can see this our default cube. Let's do a sneak peek on this scene. And yeah, as you can see, the cube is automatically being opened in a browser. Well, right now my application is a little bit too boring, so let's make it more interesting. Let's create a little animation for our cube. I will set up the first frames. And then about on the 50th frames. I will move my cube up. Now let's do a sneak peek. And here you go, my cube is going up. But I don't need the animation automatically start with the launch of the application. I want it to start a little later, when you press on this cube. To do it, first I need to set up my cube a little bit. Verge 3D adds some more settings. On the lower part of settings of each element. But if you can't find any, again you need to go to Utilities.
select Verge 3D and press Add Verge 3D params. And now you can see them. As you can see, here are settings for animation. And now it stands on automatic start and cycle type repeat. Also we have a ping pong type. It will play the animation first from the beginning to the end and then from the end to the beginning backwards. Let's see how it works. So change it to ping pong, sneak peek. And as you can see it works. First it goes from the beginning to the end and then backwards. But well, I don't need my animation to start automatically anyway. So I will turn the auto start off, do a sneak peek. And my cube is again static, but now it has an animation on it. Now let's export it to the GLT format so we can add some logic to our application. Pressing the GLT F in the menu of Virtual D, choose my awesome app, and we just replace the previous GLT file which was created as a template. Again, it works, we can see our cube, but nothing happens. So, let's actually add some logic. For that, I will press Edit Puzzles. And that will open the Visual Logic Editor of Verge2D. On the left, you can see the list of different types, different logic groups, which you can use for creating your logic. In this case, I will create a really simple logic tree. In this tutorial, I won't be explaining everything about these blocks, what they do. I will just tell you what we need to do in this example. And also to show you some of the virtual 3D potential. Under the even step, we have the blocks, which are responsible for some events or actions. These blocks will wait some action or event from the user and then they will do some actions with the set time. In this case, I need the block when clicked. It will wait for a click from the user on a specific object. The types of objects are in a selectors tab. In this case, I will select the box, aka my cube. And to add some animation, I need the block play animation. So I will add it here and then in the selectors I need to choose the animation clip or animation action which I want to be played. After the export the animation inherits the name from the object it is on. Let's save it and run it. Now if I press the cube it starts moving. So, these are very basic actions that Verge3D is capable of. Oh, and let's actually see how easy it is to upload our application onto the cloud and to share the link. For that, I need to press the world icon and now our application is being uploaded to the cloud. And here we go, we got the link to our application. Now I can copy the link and share on all the selected social medias my new application. That's all, I hope this video helps you to understand some of the VHTD capabilities and also will help you to install it. In the next tutorials I will tell you more about VHTD options and some specifics of working with it. That's all, thank you for listening.